Today I want to talk a little bit about a certain scenario in uh, women's self-defense. First thing I want to mention is the thing that I, I always say about self-defense really for anybody is that the best self-defense is not getting yourself into a situation that you need to defend yourself in the first place. So that could be as simple as if you're walking down the street and it's late at night and you see three people standing down at the end of the street, you can cross the street and walk down the other side of the street and just avoid them completely. They might not mean you any harm, but it doesn't hurt you to cross the street and just make sure of that, of that fact. Um, they're not going to be angry at you for crossing the street. Uh, they're not going to be upset that you crossed the street and thought that they were bad people. Really, they're not even going to notice. They're not even going to care. And even if they do notice, then they're probably going to just think that uh, you're a smart person for not walking past three people that you don't know in the dark. So as human beings, we unfortunately uh, care a lot about the feelings of people that we don't know at all. And uh, we sort of rationalize our way out of um, protecting ourselves in a potentially dangerous situation. So that's just the first thing I'll always tell anybody is if you don't put yourself in that situation, then more than likely something's not going to happen. Now, in the case of female self-defense, what is really important to remember is that about 80% of the attacks are going to be uh, done by somebody that you already know and somebody that is already in a close and intimate space with you already. So in that case, you have to have a few things uh, prepared to make sure that if it does happen in an intimate space, you are able to use uh, your lighter body weight, your less muscle mass than the potential attacker uh, in, in, in order to get your way out. And you do that just by simple things like uh, geometry and uh, proper movement and more optimal movement of uh, the human body. But again, even in a close situation, use your, your intuition. Don't just talk yourself out of thinking that it's okay to be in a certain situation alone with someone. If you have a bad feeling, there's absolutely nothing wrong with acting on that bad feeling and just making sure that you don't put yourself into that situation in the first place. It doesn't mean you have to walk around being scared and paranoid, but just make sure that you listen uh, to that voice inside your head and don't ignore it because you're more worried about what somebody else is going to think. Your personal safety uh, is obviously the most important thing uh, here. Now, what I want to show today is um, just some, some ideas about what happens if you're suddenly grabbed uh, from the back. So I will have a person come up here and demonstrate. <laughs> you can put a really mean look on your face too. So this, this is basically uh, what, let's say that this, this is what happens. You're walking alone and suddenly you're grabbed from the back, okay? Now what this person is probably going to do is they're going to grab you tight and they're going to lift you up off your feet and they're going to take you somewhere or, or throw you to the ground or do something with you, okay? So one common technique that is shown for being grabbed from behind is finding the pinky fingers of your assailant, um, or just allow me to do this, peeling the pinky back because the idea is that it's the weakest finger on the hand, peeling the pinky back, ouch, 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 hurts the person and getting away. Now, if he grabs me hard and squeezes his hands tight, it took me quite a while to grab that pinky, okay? Now, if he grabs really tight and then he lifts me up, I'm already, I've already been thrown on the ground before I can even get my hands on the pinky. So unless I've practiced this millions of times and I am unbelievably good at immediately grabbing, squeezing the nail, and yanking that pinky open, I'm going to be on the ground before I, I'm even able to do that. The next uh, sort of more, more, more popular defense uh, strategy is this idea of dropping down, and if you just allow me to do this, bumping yourself backwards and lifting your arms up. Basically the idea here is that I'm dropping down below, I'm pulling these arms up, I'm bumping my butt back so that it makes this person pitch forward and that allows me to get away and escape. But of course what happens is, if he would be so kind as to just chase me and grab me again after I escape, let's just move back a little bit here. So here I've bumped back, I've escaped, now he just chases me and grabs me again, and now here I am in that scenario again. How many times am I going to do that before I get thrown on the ground? The other problem, of course, is that when I bump myself back like this, you can see now that all my weight is forward, and if he just shoves me, I'm going to go down, or he might fall down right on top of me. And if we're, we're, we're imagining that this person who, who is attacking us is bigger and stronger, then obviously we do not want them falling on top of us with our back to them. So, in Wing Chun Kung Fu, we have a little bit of a different way of dealing with this. And the first thing that we would do is when we're grabbed from behind, is we drop our weight. So that's one thing that we have in common with many ways of self-defense. We want to drop our weight down, get a bit of a more solid base. 
But what we don't want to do is we don't want to pitch ourselves forward and take our balance off of the center of our feet and throw it ahead of ourselves. So what we do is we keep our abs tight, we drop ourselves down, we keep our upper body upright. Now, like I said, me trying to escape, if he grabs really hard, grab as hard as you can, I'm, I'm trying as hard as I can to lift my shoulders, but there's no way that my shoulders versus his back muscles and chest muscles and arm muscles are going to win. Tiny muscles compared to a whole chain of much larger muscles, almost all the muscles in his upper body. So me trying to get myself out by lifting my, my arms up, even if it's done very quickly, remember, he might have grabbed me very quickly and very hard. If I'm not as, anywhere near as strong, there's a very low likelihood of that working. So what happens is we drop ourselves down first of all. So what this makes sure is that if he tries to move me, so side to side or lift me up or whatever, just try to do something, I can, by being lower, it's harder for him to lift me. If I'm solid and stiff and he lifts me, very easy. So I want to get myself nice and low and be a little bit loose, kind of like a, like a rag doll. Right? Just like when there, there's a protester on the ground, it takes four cops to lift the protester because they've got to grab all four limbs because the person just slumps away when they try to grab, grab the person by, say, the belt or something, basically impossible. So we've softened the body, we've dropped ourselves down. Now you can see that even when I'm grabbed around here, if I can't move my arms very much, I can move my hips quite a bit. So what happens is I move my hip out of the way and bang, strike in the groin. Now the, what's going to happen is for anybody who gets hit in the groin, the, the human brain is going to say, let's move back, okay? We got to get the reproductive organs out of the way. So for that brief moment, you've dropped, boom, they've sat back. Then you take the hand, you bring it inside. We can compress our own rib cage quite a bit, get the hand up and we step into them, boom, 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 and we then take care of them from there. So this way, what we are doing is we are attacking the attack and turning the tables. The other two methods, if you grab me again, are about peeling the finger, so allow me to let go, and escaping, giving them a second chance. The other one is dropping, lifting, bumping back, and trying to escape, giving them a second chance. What we want to do is not give them a second chance. We want to drop, we want to hammer them, we want to turn around and hit them, and continue on until they are finished. And uh, that is the way that we do it in Wing Chun Kung Fu. Yeah, man. <laughs> Thanks, bro. <laughs>